Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Darku Metals. Let's say you've made a couple of pairs of blacksmith tongs, and one might take 3 8 one might take 5 8 material, and you want to mark those two tools so you can identify which one's which. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you a couple of common methods to do that. Dana happens to be in the shop. Uh, she is the only engraver that we have here. Uh, she uses a tool called an air scribe. I'm going to be showing you her doing a layout and uh, the actual production of a piece. Uh, and the video was prompted today by a special order gift, and I love this type of a thing. I love being a part of it. Uh, one of our steel roses was ordered. Uh, it's got a specialty color. We put a full spray of leaves on it, and there is an inscription. And Dana is here to put the inscription on the rose. Now, I'm not going to show you the rose itself because this is a gift for someone, and it happens to have their last name in it. So for obvious reasons, I'm not going to put this on the internet. So I will show you something that Dana is going to prepare for, for film. It's going to be a quick piece she does in brass. And speaking of Dana, I, I really do want to mention that she is a very intricate part of this business. And there are people out there who think just because they don't see her in the shop all the time that she's off goofing around somewhere. And that's just not the case. All right, YouTube. So for the purpose of this video, I want to talk about the two most commonly available marking methods for the home shop uh, enthusiast. And when I say marking, I'm talking about leaving a permanent impression on a piece of metal, whether it's a die or a special tool that you've made, um, or even just to remind you what kind of material that you're working with if you wanted to stamp the corner of a block of material, for example. Uh, this is just the random piece of aluminum that I had laying around the shop. So I'm going to be using this for the demonstration. And the first method that I want to talk about is stamping. Now with stamps, they usually come in two separate sets. You have your letters and you have your numbers. With these, it's very simple. The only accessory you need is a halfway decent hammer that feels good in your hand. I am going to grab one of these at random. Uh, this is, clean it up here, this is an F. All you need to do to mark your material is place the stamp on the material, wiggle it back and forth until you feel like it's completely engaged with the parent metal. Uh, you want to make sure that this is sitting as flat as possible. You want to hit this thing once. If you have to hit it twice, sometimes it's hard to line everything back up again and you get these weird, almost like a, an echo of the image. <clears throat> see, I don't know how well you could see that, but uh, there's my F. Some people find hand stamps a little bit tedious to use. Sometimes they're hard to line all the letters up. You might have one a little higher than the other. Um, and they're not really used that often anymore. Old school shop uh, technicians and machinists, you know, they grew up using these things. They're comfortable with them. And they look more professional than a hand engraving tool. Before I talk about the hand engraving stuff, I want to show you a custom made stamp that was made just for us at Dark Moon Metals. That is our maker's mark whenever we do a uh, project involving the forge. And to ensure <clears throat> that I hold this straight up and down, what I've done is I went on the lathe and I made myself a collar. That's just enough to have a little bit of slop uh, when you put the stamp inside, but it's also just tight enough where it'll hold it perfectly straight up and down on a flat surface. So now I don't have to worry about whether it's angled one way or the other. I can just hold this and hit it with a hammer. And I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that. Let's see, there it is. But that is the Dark Moon Metals Maker's Mark. The second common option most people have available to them is a handheld engraving tool. Now this is an electric tool 
uh, and it has a high speed oscillation, it vibrates, and this point is made out of a high speed steel. And it's almost kind of like a tattoo gun, the way it sounds. This needle or point will vibrate extremely fast, causing scratches to be left in the surface. Uh, let me just show you. Now what's nice about this is if this material wasn't perfectly flat, I could still write like this. This is just about as good as your penmanship is, so if you have sloppy handwriting, this might not be a way to go, especially if you want this to be legible. Uh, if you do have sloppy handwriting, I do have a solution for you, if you are interested. This is a cheap stencil that came in, uh, I, don't, I don't even remember, I think it might have been something that my sister gave me a long time ago. But you can use this in conjunction with a regular engraving tool. As long as the point itself is through the stencil and not coming into the contact with the plastic, this will work fairly well for laying out numbers and letters and all sorts of other things. And I'll just do a quick demo. I'll do. Uh, the S, the T, and the U, just to show you what I'm talking about. Now the trick is, you really need to hold the stencil still. You don't want the stencil to move. And that, you can see, is really nice and neat. I didn't mean to go through my maker's mark, but uh, you can tell that that is a heck of a lot of an improvement over just doing something by hand up there. So you can get a fairly good level of precision out of this tool if you have a steady hand or if you're using a stencil. So I'm going to give you a break from me and I'm going to show you a little bit of Dana doing a layout and of using her engraving tool. And at the conclusion of that clip, I will show you the tool that she uses and I'll explain it for you. Okay folks, let me introduce you to the Air Scribe. Now the first thing you might notice is that we do have a set of earmuffs here. Uh, when you are using this tool or the electric engraver, depending on what you're working on, uh, it can generate quite a bit of noise and it's really, really annoying with the buzzing and everything else. So uh, earmuffs are a good idea. I don't know what decibel level it actually reaches and if hearing protection is necessary, but this just makes it much more enjoyable to use. Um, you don't see safety glasses anywhere on the table because they are still on my face. Um, these are the safety glasses that I wear all the time in the shop. There are some people out there that would say using safety glasses with an electric engraving tool might be a little overkill. It doesn't really throw things anywhere, but you know what? It's better to be safe than sorry. And with the Air Scribe, you do want safety glasses. This is a lot more powerful than what you can get from your random local hardware store. This is air powered, as the word Air Scribe might indicate. And unlike its counterpart, which has a hardened high speed steel tip, this tip is made of diamond and it will cut a lot of different things. Uh, in addition to metals and plastics and everything that the counter electric counterpart can uh, do, this can also do things like marble. Um, it's a very, very nicely designed ergonomic tool. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head 
who the manufacturer of this particular one is because, <coughs> excuse me, for some odd reason they haven't plastered their logo all over this like most other companies do. Um, but this is an absolute pleasure to use and uh, it gives you very, very fine control. The tip's smaller than the electric counterpart, which lets you be a heck of a lot more detailed. Uh, I'm going to show you a quick thing that Dana did. I literally asked her for a 10 minute, give me something I can show the good folks on YouTube, and this is what she came up with. Um, she did an expression in French. I think it's French. Yes. I, well, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's French. Um, and she just did a couple of scallops and a few other nifty little accents. And like I said, this took her about 10 minutes and it was all freehand. When she does an engraving, she lays everything out in a very fine Sharpie first. So that way, if you can um, imagine, once you have everything uh, positioned where you want it, you can just go over it with the tool itself and do the engraving process. To do something freehand, while yes, a lot of artists uh, are very confident in doing that, and I'm, I know Dana can do it as well, but um, she likes to bring things over to me and say, hey, what do you think? Do you want me to change anything before the engraving is actually on the metal? Uh, and that just makes a lot of sense. There you have it, YouTube. A couple of very common and easy methods for marking tools and materials in your shop. And before I end the video, I just want to say that uh, when you engrave something, or you identify it as yours, it, it really does make it personal. And if you are the type of guy who goes out and works in a machine shop somewhere, or in my case, working in aerospace, um, having my own tools that I bring from home, uh, it's actually encouraged in some places because you have a tendency to take care of your tools better than you would if somebody just handed you something and said, here, this is yours. Uh, my father worked in the same aerospace shop I did, and he used the big wrench uh, when he was taking dies and things out of presses. And he just needed something with a lot of le extra leverage in it to get the bolts undone from these 20, 30, 40 ton uh, hydraulic presses. And um, he went out and got this wrench because he was tired of going back and forth to the tool room, and he bought this and put it in his tool cart so he always had access to it. And he did engrave it. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it. Uh, if I can find it there. Where is it? Oh, it's up top here. And it says shaky. Now, I know that's kind of odd for a name that is not his real name. His real name was Russ. But uh, my father uh, also liked restoring old cars and uh, he did a lot of auto body work. And as the story goes, uh, when he first started getting into actually painting cars with uh, the spray guns and, and doing all the masking and stuff, uh, he was apparently a little bit nervous uh, the first time he did this and uh, he was shaking with the spray gun because he didn't want to mess it up. And uh, I don't know, if, I think it was my godfather and a, and a couple other people that were standing around, they were kind of poking at him and they, they started calling him Shaky and it was a nickname that stuck. So. There are quite a few uh, wrenches and other tools around this uh, garage that have the word shaky written on it. And there are some people out there who might see it and not know why, but you know, this is something I can say, you know, I could put it in the hand of maybe if I have a son someday, or if my nephew comes up to visit, I can say that, you know, hey, this belonged to your grandfather, this was his. And um, just doing that little bit of engraving, it might not seem like a lot, but, uh, it, it encases the memory into the metal, and um, it definitely makes it your own. So I'm going to leave you for now. Uh, I've got a few other things to do. I'm going to stop rambling because I can talk about this sort of stuff forever. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and you may have noticed that we had a little bit of fun with this video, especially uh, at Dana's expense and the tire swing. But um, I just really wanted to throw that in there because uh, we need to have fun when we're out here doing what we're doing. Whether it's uh, working on a commission for a customer or hanging out with the YouTube community, uh, if you are not enjoying what you're doing, you need to go and do something else. And that's just, I believe, the key to happiness. So yes, I will stop rambling. I will leave you to the rest of your day. Uh, this has been Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. 
I will definitely see you again soon.